Hey sisters in Christ, how are you all doing today? I pray you're all doing well. I'm going to be talking today about the importance of coming separate from unbelievers, coming separate from the world, and how it is a commandment for those who are born again of the Spirit. And I'm going to give my testimony today of what happened when I obeyed the Lord and officially came out from among the world and bring encouragement to my fellow sisters in Christ today. That's what I'm here to do. Um, so I'm going to start off by reading 2 Corinthians uh, 6, starting in verse 14. <clears throat> Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Amen. <laughs> we know that it is expected of us to come separate. In your walk... You can only go so far until you will be present, presented with an option to, to leave the world, to forsake all, forsake your family who are unbelievers, forsake everything of this world, take up your cross and follow Christ. Um, I looked up in verse 17 where it talks about touching not the unclean thing. And in the Greek, it actually is speaking in a moral sense, unclean in thought and in life. Um, we see throughout the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament, examples of the Lord specifically telling his people to not partake in anything to do with people who are unbelievers or people who are of other nations and who worship other gods. And he specifically said, because they will get you to worship other gods. And what happened? They disobeyed the Lord and they went out they had communion with these, these people, these pagans, and before they knew it, that's exactly what happened. They, they turned their backs on God, and they worshipped other gods. So it is very important for us, I want to stress the importance, that we have to get to, eventually get to a point where we make that decision. And the Lord will give us that opportunity, especially, especially if he has placed his Holy Spirit inside you. You will be given that opportunity to flee and leave the situation that you're in or stay. And I want to give my testimony to you all today about how I came to this decision. It was not my choice. <laughs> it was definitely the Lord's choice in bringing me out of the world completely. And I praise him and thank him for that. Um, you know, with my situation, I was living at home um, 
or I was sharing, I was roommating with a family member. Uh, and as I continued to grow in my walk and mature spiritually, there then started to be more division taking place under our roof. And the, the more arguments that happened, the more they were just centered around spiritual things. And I was confused at the time because I thought, well, maybe this person that I love so much is, is a weaker, is weaker in the faith because they also profess Christ. So what is happening here? Um, I noticed that I started to even receive persecution under my own roof um, for, for being in the word constantly, um, for starting to wear head coverings, um, and for uh, even evangelizing to other people. Um, what started to happen was these other people in my life were then beginning to say that I thought that I was better than them and um, that I had a haughty look on my face all the time. And I didn't understand what was happening because everything that was going on in my spirit, it's like I couldn't, I couldn't suppress. So I had people that were trying to, trying to suppress that, trying to get me to calm down. But it, it, that wasn't, that's not what was happening. It was the exact opposite. Um, when I first started being drawn to the Lord, he just started taking people away from me in my life. And before I knew it, I had completely just fallen off the face of the earth to all of my friends, uh, had deleted all of my social media accounts. Um, and not because I thought that I was following a commandment at that time. It's my interest just wasn't in anything that they were interested in anymore. And I found that I didn't even want to have a conversation with anyone outside of Christ because it all became vanity to me. It all became vanity to me. And I became more and more alienated, even in my own family. They didn't understand. I think that they were happy at first. They're like, oh, she, you know, she's got her life back on, or not back on, it was never on track. <laughs> but she, she's, you know, doing well. She's, you know, out of, of all of the sinful stuff she was doing before. But then once they started to see that this was no joke, this was no game, and that I was really, truly committed to following Jesus Christ, that's when the division started taking place. And um, I want to just stress to you all that it, if you do not come separate as the Lord specifically commands for us to do, if you have not forsaken all for Christ, it is absolutely sure that you will digress in your walk and possibly lose your salvation with him. That is how strong, it, how important it is that that we, that we come out from among the world. The Bible says, if you are a friend of the world, you're an enemy with God. You know, you cannot, you cannot claim Christ and still take place in these pagan holidays and, and having friends that, that aren't saved. Now, Yes, Christ did commune with sinners. He came for sinners, not for those who think they're righteous. He came for sinners. But when he was with them, he spoke the gospel to them. 
He told them that they need to repent. He told them over and over again, sin no more. And we cannot keep one foot in the world and one foot in Christ. It's impossible. You know, you, you there, there's just no communion. There's no communion that light has with darkness. And it's just very important that we all, we all understand that. Um, I also want to share a scripture in 1 Corinthians about coming separate from those who claim to be believers, but aren't. Um, I think there are, there's a lot of um, testimonies of people who were brought up in a Christian household but then once they receive the Holy Spirit, they realize, wait, this is this was never right. But they're around people who still claim Christ. And there's a scripture in 1 Corinthians that says, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. You will fall right into their sins that they, that they are doing. People who covet, people who still are enticed, and, and compelled with things of this world, people who um, are still striving after things of this world, who claim Christ, are not walking with Christ, are not walk, walking with Christ at all. And I want to say they may even be more dangerous for you to be around than someone who claims to be an atheist. They really, truly are the modern day Pharisees, these people, because they, their demons hate everything that is truly of the spirit. So the more you mature in your walk, they see that and they see their unrighteousness, their own unrighteousness, when they see you progress in the Lord. And if you tell them to repent and you you give them that opportunity and you you let them know hey you're not you're not walking with the lord you don't truly know the lord and they are so prideful that they can't take that rebuke it's time to leave it's time it's time to leave and um that was the best decision that i could have ever made in in my own my own walk I knew shortly before coming here, coming officially out of the world, that the Lord was going to do something big. And I was fasting and I was getting up every morning before before sunrise and, and seeking him. And because I knew he was going to do something, I just didn't know what it was yet. But I could feel the, the, the drawing out that he was doing with me. Everything was crumbling on, in my household with this other person. And I just understood, Lord, in order for me to properly serve you, I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. But I was terrified. I was terrified. The closer I came to being removed from the world officially, the more Satan amped up his attacks through this other person, uh, through all kinds of things. Satan was not going to fully cut, ha have that last cord cut without a fight. And so you need to be prepared for that as well. But the key to fully doing this is you have to completely trust the Lord. You have to trust his will for your life. 
And you cannot, you cannot let anyone, because Satan's going to use as many people as he can to keep you in the world and to tell you things and to try to scare you and try to bring about fear. You have to take heed to the Holy Spirit. You have to obey. This is a huge part of obedience. And if we refuse to be obedient and think we can still live under the same roof as our unsaved parents because it's comfortable or we can still continue to fellowship with with sinners who don't know Christ you're deceived and your walk is it's 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 just going to it's going to fall apart it's going to fall apart and it's it's really unfortunate and it's really it's really sad that most people don't understand that if you are truly his you will come separate from the world no doubt about it and there's no gray area there's no gray area in it you know so I just wanted to share that testimony with you all and encourage you if you are in a situation where you know the Lord is knocking on your heart and he is trying to get you to a point where you officially cut bait, take heed and do it and do it. It's crucial to your walk. It's very important. So I love each and every one of you. I hope you have a blessed day and I will talk to you very soon. Take care.